Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I am so excited. We are recording in Denver, Colorado in a live, fully running, functioning, legit studio. Um, TNT is launching a new uh, situation, I guess, alongside our open mics that highlight diversity and inclusion and equality. We are going to lean in and highlight creatives. Um, How do these two fit together? Well, I think creativity, music, art, everything is a universal language. So alongside having the conversations around diversity and inclusion, we're going to start to foster some of the conversation around points that can bring us together, and that's art. So we've got our first creative that we're highlighting today, Mr. Elliot Anderson. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. How's it going, everybody? Thank you for having me, Kristen. (laughs) Yes. I should say thank you for having me because we're really on your home turf here. (laughs) Definitely. Yeah, we're at 3rd and James here in Denver. Um, yeah, we're in the big old live room here, but we are uh, one of the few uh, large console studios here in Denver. Um, I'm still interning here, full disclosure. I've got my test coming up. Um, but yeah, um, I'm uh, my name's Elliot Anderson. I'm a um, I'm an audio engineer, as you know, um, and composer and producer. Um, I've been making my own music for the past 10 years um, and producing other people's music. Um, and then for the past four years, I've been working professionally um, as an engineer, as a freelancer. Um, so, I mean, I, all my, my work spans from, you know, producing beats for an artist I work with in New York named Dom Frost to, you know, assisting here on a, on a you know, nine piece band session where we're using every cable in the studio. So. We, I, I do a little bit of everything, um, but I mean, I consider myself an audio, a professional audio nerd, and my friends could probably attest to that. Um, <laughs> he loves yeah. his microphone. I, I, know I that. love my microphone <laughs> very much, and I hope to have more microphones to love. There, the there's the goal. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> I, I'm excited to have this conversation because I graduated college and right away I came back to Colorado and I jumped into the music scene and I interned at House of Blues in okay. Denver, which is no longer yeah. here. And then a little label label um, that was a startup. And I just, I told you, I, I just didn't, the industry wasn't a fit for me at the time, mm-hmm. but I loved music. I loved everything around it, the events, the promotion, just got kind of out of it. So um, I actually know Elliot through his dad from CrossFit, because, you know, CrossFit fans stick together. And uh, when he was talking, he's like, yeah, my son does, you know, he's an audio engineer and com- composer. And I was talking to my podcast. I'm like, we got to connect. So to have it come full circle and be back into the creative scene of Denver 20 years later after college, I think it's about 20 years, um, is really awesome. And the, the Denver music scene, let's talk about that a little bit because yeah. Denver's thriving and growing. We're not a huge city, but we're, we're pretty right. big and there's phenomenal creativity happening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, a lot of the talk in Denver, you know, revolves around we're, we're not a major music market because there isn't a major label presence here, whether it be, you know, like Universal, Warner, the big guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I think it's pretty unfair to discredit, you know, the music scene in Denver because there is like so much diversity when it comes to genres and things like that. And I mean... For certain genres, especially like Denver has been a capital for those genres. Like, I mean, bass music and electronic music, there's a huge scene for that here, jam bands and stuff like that. So, you know, there's, there's not a ton of, you know, big headliners, you know, living here. Like we don't have the Foo Fighters here or something like that. But, um, I think, I think, yeah, it, it, people are too quick to discredit the amount of cool things that are going on in, in the music industry and in Colorado as a whole. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's, that's part of what makes my work fun is a, as a freelancer is, you know, being on the search for, you know, people to work with. Um, because I don't really, I mean, I mean, I primarily work with, with rappers, but I mean, I, I'd like to work with as many, you know, different genres, different artists, different styles as I can, um, just yeah. to keep my chops fresh and, and to know, you know, what I'm doing if I get into that situation in the future. Um, but yeah, Denver is a, Denver is a really special place for music and it has been for a while. And yeah. I mean, 
one thing to attest to that is like growing up here and you know going to red rocks for it like yeah. i grew up seeing shows at red rocks you know and so there's tons of local bands that their goal is to like play on that stage yeah. so yeah there's a lot of cool stuff going on in terms of music here um and i'm really excited to see how it grows moving forward yeah um, with you know new venues being built like mission ballroom um which is crushing I mean, yeah sold out i mean all the time. yeah and that's like i mean that's one of the cooler venues i've been to um especially like an indoor venue just the whole open concept of it yeah. um but yeah so it'll i think and, and especially you know after this past year there haven't been any shows there hasn't so people are ready to go so Get i out. think there's going to be a big pop coming yeah. out at least knock on wood i know but. i think there will be i mean i know one of my friends was just at red rocks this past weekend and there was a show yep. i think it was a dj set i'm not sure yeah the k Tronada, he yeah played, yeah played two nights i love i love k Tronada. shout out k Tronada. there you go <laughs> i yeah i'm excited to see what happens and i think you know the more money that comes out here around art like we're getting mm -hmm. big exhibits at museums uh the van gogh things come in to stapleton actually right. stanley so as those things come in and money comes in i think that fosters more creativity and more art and, and whatnot yeah um before we dig into like your background, because I want to talk more about your journey, because the yeah. journey of an artist is really hard. It's you're an entrepreneur, but then it's you're also slanging your own vision, creativity right. in your heart. Yeah, so absolutely. It's, it's a whole other level. Um, but brag a little bit about um, the name drops, who you work with, because you're you, you're pretty fresh out of college, yeah. starting yeah. out, but you're already deep in the mix of who you're working with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so my main client is um, is a fellow named Dom Frost. He's out of New York. Um, he's a rapper. Um, I'm currently um, helping produce his album, so I've produced two of the tracks on that so far, um, and I'm planning on doing two more for that that EP. So we've got that in the works right now. Um, a lot of the artists that I work with actually aren't directly my clients, but that I've like kind of met and you know know and like to see kind of developing coming here through our studio at Third and James. Um, and then I mean, primarily recently, I've kind of. I, I took a little step back from from uh, writing and creating for you know other artists and producing beats and have been focusing a lot more on 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 my own music. Um, I go as Parmesan. Um, <laughs> I I primarily make um, house music, but I, I I like to do a little bit of everything. The the last EP I just put out, which is is on Spotify, it um, just came out. Check it yeah, out. It's it just hot. came out two weeks ago. Um, it's a it's a big switch up from my normal kind of my normal kind of chops, but. Yeah, so I, the, the last month or two, I've been working really hard on just putting together and finishing songs to have, you know, a catalog of stuff to release and have that kind of, you know, planned out and ready to go so that I'm able to, you know, focus more on, on finding new clients. Yeah. Um, a buddy of mine that I actually met uh, when I was recording in New York back in January, he goes by Darris, D-V-R-R-I-S. Um, He's actually coming out here in July, and we're planning on booking some studio time with uh, with some people that he's bringing out. Okay. Um, so that's going to be super fun. I'm really looking forward to that. He was the uh, engineer at the studio that we recorded at when I was in New York. So okay. that's super exciting. Um, and then yeah, my my I've got my internship test coming up. So to test out of you know being an intern. Um, and so I'm actually bringing in a buddy of mine's band that I work with. Um, it's going to be their first time like recording in a studio environment. So it'll be it'll be a, a fun challenge um, for both me and them. But also, um, I think it'll be really cool and hopefully will like inspire them. They, they're, they're wanting to track a four track EP. Um, we're just going to be doing one that day. But you know, knock on wood, if everything goes well, I think we're going to want to, you know, record the rest of the EP together. So that would be super cool. Awesome. Um, and then I, I work with a, a buddy of mine that I actually went to school with. His name's Shannon. He goes by uh, Zuko, Z-U-K-O. Um, and we have like a little side project that we're working on, but ultimately our, our goal in the next two years is to open up our own studio space um, and create both a, a studio and a developmental label. Mm -hmm. Um that I mean, we'll mainly be working with rappers because I mean that's kind of his modus operandi, and and we have connections in that world. But I'd also like to expand that beyond just rapping to you know the stuff I do, production things like that. Um, so that's kind of our goal, and we're we're sitting down and kind of starting talks of you know LLCs and all, all the business, all the business stuff yeah. that I know nothing about. Um, you learn <clears> fast though. I, yeah. I think if you can navigate the waters as a creative, yeah, the business part it's a little bit lengthy, but it's easier than again putting your heart out there and putting a price tag right. on it well and the other thing too is that 
um, and this go this ties back to you know being a part of the Denver music scene is. You know, in in my world, I I mean, eventually, I would like to be a record producer and be mm-hmm. producing. Yeah, artists. tell us what we, our first meeting. I'm like, what are your goals? Who did you say you want to be the next? I would like to be the next. Why am I completely uh, Rick Rubin? I don't know why. And that I heard took Quincy so Jones. There was a, yeah. There was some solid I'd love names to be. In I'd love to be a combo of Quincy Jones and Rick Rubin, which is saying <laughs> yes. a lot. Yeah, That's I'm here for crazy it. Crazy shit, but but I mean, yeah, I. Uh, part of, you know, being an engineer here and, and a producer and, and just being part of the Colorado scene, you have to kind of gain the knowledge of both sides of, mm-hmm. of the table. Um, I mean, it's, it's easy for me to get the creative side of things done and to do all that, but it's a lot harder using my other side of the brain to, you know, focus on promotion and A&R and the, just the business of everything, publishing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's just the business of the music industry. It, you know, outside of that, you know, there's a whole other setting way. up business bank accounts and all that stuff. And I'm still young, so I'm still figuring all that stuff out, obviously. Um, but at the end of the day, um, yeah, that it's really important, I think. And, and I don't know if other people feel the same way, but to to have knowledge on like both sides of the table because it's going to help it's going to help in the long run you know down the road yeah so. well i think getting mentors in that leaning into people if they've got music specific or whatever your creativity is right that are business specific and then you have your strategic partnerships where they can help mentor right. you in different arenas yeah and i think the ultimate goal too i mean right now we're all kind of figuring it out because you know like we're broke and we're okay. just we're working on it right but the landscape is changing in general right like you you got all the budget in the world the world's changing right and and there's a certain like type of pride that i feel too being able to kind of like get those things done on my own um and yeah like i said it'll pay off down the road and you know hopefully eventually i'm busy enough that i need a manager to you know schedule clients (laughs) for me and things like that um rick rubin style yes um but yeah you know i and and all the guys that I look up to in, in the music industry um, have accomplished that. Like Pharrell is a great example. Yeah. Um, he's a super talented musician, like cool guy. Good human. Um, great human, no, understands and knows the business side of music, but also like, I mean, he, I think he just opened a hotel in like Miami. So oh, like, I bl- oh, the skincare line, yeah, I mean, there's so uh, many things. Human, or human love or whatever, whatever his, uh, his sneaker brand is, they're dope, I have a yeah. pair. But yeah, just, just I, I really look up to like people that have like that hustle, yeah. you know, um, because I hold a really high standard for myself and I can be like pretty self-deprecating sometimes. It's very easy for me to do that. Yeah. But I think I have that in common with a lot of those people that just like want more and understand like what needs to be done to, yeah. to I, achieve well, that. There's a balance in that because I'm with you. I'm certainly my worst critic and or hardest critic. I was even saying, I'm like, do you ever get used to listening to your voice? And Elliot's like, no. I'm like, okay, good. Because I, it's every <laughs> podcast I listen back to, I'm like, Ugh, is that yeah. how I sound? Like, we're it's even it, weirder right? as a vocalist. <laughs> You're I like, can't wow, imagine. it could sound totally fine. And everybody in the room's like, it sounds great. I'm like, no, it doesn't. It's, it's just I, weird. I missed that. No. Like, <laughs> but I think that's good to have that grounding space. And you're kind of never really at the finish line. So you're constantly hungry to get there. Yeah, no, and it's absolutely. balancing. You can't can't you got to give yourself some yeah. credit sometimes and yeah. understand no totally you've done but keep that balance yeah no that's super important i agree i agree well all those humans you just mentioned you know rick rubin and frell and um all of our creatives there's such a beautiful underline of creativity and art being this universal language mm-hmm. and we are in such a divided space in 2021 um i, I want to unpack your journey a little bit more for some of our creatives that are looking to get into the business but w- is there a good example of when you know music art has really brought something into your life that wouldn't have otherwise have been there meeting people or opportunities or anything like that yeah i mean working here first of all and interning here i think has been the biggest impact um both just experience wise and yeah i i mean i I went to school for a year and a half for for audio engineering and it was great and that's kind of you know i already had an idea of how i grew up playing music so you know i knew to plug in an an XLR cable in for a microphone and things like that. But, um, you know, working here and actually like being on sessions with people that have been doing this for 20 years, like Matt Leggy, who is an engineer uh, that works, he's a freelancer, but he works out of here a a ton. 
really talented guy, good buddy of mine. Um, he, he started out and is from Nashville. Um, and he has, you know, done albums with Peter Frampton. He's worked with Taylor Swift. And so being able to work with guys like that, that have their chops down and, and are willing to, you know, teach you, yeah. you know, it's it, at first it was kind of nerve wracking to like, Oh, like, I don't know, like, do I ask a question right now? Sort of thing. Yeah. But, but you know, just working here and, and, you know, learning and things like that, I, I've gained, you know, like sort of a mutual respect with these guys because I've learned so much from them. Um, and, and the, the other side of, of, you know, besides just running a session, which is, you know, something that's super important for me to learn, um, just learning kind of the more, uh, like the not the business side, but just the label side of things. Yeah. Uh, Third and James is a, uh, it's a studio, but it's uh, primarily a developmental record, record label. Um, so, just work, just seeing how, you know, that plays out with our label artists and, you know, how shows work and how everything, how everything functions has been really cool. Um, another really cool experience, um, that was my first actual internship, uh, was I was still living up in Boulder and I worked for, um, Z2 entertainment, which is, uh, the Boulder theater, the Fox theater, okay. uh, primarily. And so I was stage handing. Um, and so that gave me a ton of ex experience in like the live and production side of things. Um, and also made me realize that I don't want to work in live production. <laughs> that, that theater has been there for what? 50 oh, years, yeah, long maybe time. longer. Yeah. yeah. And so that was really cool, but it was really difficult. Um, and I, I realized that I'd rather be sitting in a studio till 4 a.m. and not like <laughs> running around like a chicken with its head cut off. Yeah. Like, oh, God, you know, like, events are hard. Yeah, it's a lot. And, and that was cool to, you know, learn. And, and yeah. now that I understand that, it's really cool. But yeah, so I think those were two major, major ones. And then, I mean, like when I went out to New York back in, in January, that was my first uh, first time, you know, being in a different studio and as a client, not as the intern right um but working with multiple artists in a day that were coming in to hear my music and and it was my first rodeo so you know i i ended up selling a couple beats but afterwards like was like oh god i need to work on contracts and yeah. stuff like that so but that all ties back to like learning on the fly you gotta um, do both. and i've learned a lot even since then so but yeah i mean like working here has been a really a really awesome experience um just in terms of learning um, and understanding, you know, like how, how things actually work, you know, in a studio environment and just in the music industry as a yeah. whole. So yeah. shout out third and James, Thank Josh you. Grant, you guys are the best. So I love it. I love that these kind of situations are further growing in Colorado. And my background is really like sports, fitness, wellness, cross, CrossFit. And I always say, I'm so thankful that CrossFit and lacrosse had brought the humans that it has into my world, yeah. it's best friends and right. business partners and incredible opportunities and connects of connect. It's so awesome. And right. you can never overlook the power of those relationships. No, no, totally. And it's so worth taking care of. I mean, whether you're an artist or an athlete or what have you, the, the relationships you're around is it's everything. Yeah. But yeah, I think a lot of people, um, you know, my age kind of just expect things. Um, which I mean, like that partially is just due to like the climate that we grew up in and everything yeah. like that, which I get. Things are pretty um, instantaneous. Yeah. Right? But in like the older you get, and especially, and I, I don't know, like, I don't want to sound douchey in saying this, <laughs> but like I, I, before the pandemic, even like I may, I, I was going to see you for two years back. I started in 2016. I graduated high school and um, I was getting a public relations degree and I mean, I was mainly getting a degree and like partying my ass yeah, off and majors. not doing anything. Um, but then I got to the end of my sophomore year and I, you know, I just was, I was sick of doing what I was doing. I knew that I didn't want to work in an office. Like yeah. I just, I saw that in the future. I was just like, that's not me. And I hadn't worked on music really <clears throat> in, intently for, for that two year span. Um, and so I decided to like take a leap and luckily my, my, my mom works in education policy and my parents are very cool and have always been supportive of my music. Um, so they helped with that transition, but I kind of knew, you know, going into this industry, even though I was going to school and stuff like that, that, you know, I'm going to have to work some side jobs yeah. and I'm going to have to work really hard if I want to succeed a, just as a freelancer for any industry, but yeah. B for like what I'm doing. Um, and figuring it out on my own. So I kind of knew even before, you know, the world came to a stop what I was getting into. 
Um, and, and it was kind of rewarding because over the pandemic, like obviously shows weren't happening and, and that, that sucked. But at the same time, you know, people didn't stop creating. In fact, it almost seemed like people were creating more. Right. Um, and so that was really cool to see. And so, yeah. And like, I don't want, and like, I, I'm not trying to bash, you know, everybody like there's tons of people that work their asses off. Yeah. Um, but, well, you have to have that light bulb moment of what am I really doing? What yeah. do I want here? And even if your parents or the school or someone fails you or threatens you, you don't really make that pivot until it's in your heart. Right. Was there something that happened that we were like, all right, let's get this shit together? Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't necessarily like one thing. It was more just a buildup of like, all right, like I have literally been on academic probation for like, you know, three of the four semesters I've mm -hmm. been here, like you know, I had a, I had a girlfriend at the time and, you know, so that there were, th there were things keeping me up there. I had friends up there, but, um, you know, at the, at the same time, I just, I just kind of knew that I needed to make a change. Yeah. Um, and it didn't happen immediately either. Like I was originally planning on, on switching to CU Denver because they have a music program. And so, you know, I was, I was going to a community college for a semester to get my grades up. And by chance, I, you know, stumbled upon the trade school that I ended up going to. Um, but yeah, I, I think I just realized at the end of like that sophomore year that it just, it just wasn't for me and yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't do any more of it. And, um, I just missed music. Yeah. And so I, I, I just decided to go all in on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's a really important point to highlight because if you're younger, you're in college, or maybe you're older and you're looking to, to transition, sometimes you're like, and this is me. I'm like, oh, I got to do this and I should be doing this. And right. I always have FOMO that I'm not doing something. But also I look back and I'm like, I needed every piece of that past process to get me exactly where I'm at. And it sounds like you, you know, you had to go through that breakdown, breakthrough, and then you ch changed to Denver. And then you just so happened to find the right thing, right. the trade school. So I think if you're in a spot and you're listening, you're kind of like, I want to do something else. I want to make the change and it's so daunting and you don't know or you're feared that you're kind of behind or too late it's it's not the case things are right on time and totally. you just you have to go through it to get there yeah no absolutely yeah and that was like the definitely the main thing that was holding me back was just kind of like the the status quo of like mm -hmm. get your degree or else you're screwed you yeah. know and i don't think that's the case anymore not um there's really like wealthy, you know, CEOs yeah. and parents that are saying, kiddos, you don't have to go to yeah. college. Like, if yeah. this isn't your vibe, don't waste your time. Yeah. And I mean, as I said, you know, my mom works in education policy and a lot of the work she does um, revolves around, you know, not just, you know, good educate, good fundamental education for, mm -hmm. for kids, but also, you know, factoring in like what kids are passionate about and like to do and, and, you know, establishing like mentors and programs mm -hmm. so that, you know, you might not have, you know, audio engineering class in, in your, in your school day, but having opportunities to like, have that be a part of your life and, you know, going to, I don't, I mean, I don't know, or having, you know, master classes and studios like this and establishing things like that. So that like kids like me, like when I was in high school, you know, I mean, I did choir one year because I, <laughs> my mom wanted to hear me sing again. Okay. So I did it for her, but other than that, there was choir and there was band. There was yeah. no like, you know, audio class or producing class. And so right. I was like making beats on my laptop during math class, yeah. you know, and I, I did that nonstop. But that's and, your heart. That's your passion. Yeah. And so I just look back and, and, um, like, I think I, and, and I've heard that Valor Christian actually has like an entire like recording <laughs> studio. Yeah. <laughs> but I just, I heard about that and I was like, wow, like, that would be so cool not only to like have like as a student in like a high school or just like growing up but being able to like if i came into a studio like i'd never seen a real studio and until i until i started going to school and if i were to walk into a place like this when i was 18 yeah um before i had like you know applied to college and stuff i might have you know doubled back and kind of thought about things but also you know at that age you're like you don't know you're just you're going doing. with the yeah. herd all my yeah. friends are going yeah. up there that's what i want to do yeah. so um but yeah and yeah so the, real, the 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 main thing was just like i've i knew i came to a head and didn't want to do it and i was sick of wasting like my parents money too, yeah you know? well that's because, good to hear. 
college is not cheap, as no. we all know. So when it's your time and energy too, and this is this is some advanced thought for you know seventeen, eighteen, nineteen year old human. Like you're still kind of in the thick of it, and some of that partying, I really think you need to do. Oh yeah, and get it out and have oh, fun because yeah. life will move fast. Yeah. Adulting happens fast. Like you gotta just be a kid, and if yeah. it delays, and I still party. Everybody yeah. just <laughs> oh, responsibly. <we> know. <laughs> well, I mean, to make it tequila, you know how we roll. <laughs> yeah. But I even from a more ten thousand foot view, I think it's so critical for kiddos to have that outlet of creativity yeah. because even if you go do all the right things you get your master's degree in accounting or whatever no shade to accounting um not a numbers human clearly but <laughs> it's you you're unhappy and like in 2021 when we have all these conversations around mental health and happiness and what have you a lot of that starts when you're younger and yeah. doing what you want to do versus what you're supposed to do yeah yeah and i mean I, I so i actually so i started playing guitar when i was in like third grade or so so i was like eight eight seven or eight years old A young creative and so i was getting lessons and i loved it but like i was bored of the lessons um and so uh, my parents signed me up for a summer camp at the uh, the denver school of rock okay it was I think I, the first year that it was open and so I did a summer camp there and like I sang like rock and roll by Led Zeppelin and like a bunch of and I loved it but and I I had a good voice and they kind of recognized that and they had a show coming up so how it work is they you know there's a punk show there's a classic rock show you get a couple songs that you play and practice for three months and then you guys go play like two shows at at a venue and they needed somebody had dropped out and they needed somebody to fill in for yes. the, the the show that was happening and so they asked it. me and so i ended up doing it and then i mean the rest is history i i was there for probably five or six years i did like i did the who um that was probably my dad's favorite one because that's his favorite <laughs> band um but yeah and then i i joined the house band once i was around like sixth or seventh grade so the house band was like kind of the best players and we would go around and play random get like we would play like on the road for like a marathon or like we played for the opening of a new wing of denver health and okay like we met like garth brooks it was super random. what it was cool okay um but then we it was towards the end of our, of my school of rock career i'll call it but um, we ended up being asked to open up for one of the movies on the rocks at Red Rocks. Um, and so when I was in seventh grade, we played Red Rocks and yeah, that's you just like, like got one of the goals early. That yeah. People just have looking up at that, I was like, I'll be back. Yeah. And that's, this is what I want to do with my life. And even though, you know, like life moves in weird, mysterious ways yeah. and, there's that gray area of, oh, I got to high school and what, that's nerdy. I don't really, really care. I, mean, I, I was making beats and stuff. At that point, I was more interested in, you know, electronic music and stuff. But yeah, without that experience, there's no way that I would would still be, you know, like grinding on music like this. Yeah. But you need those little like God wings or however yeah. you able to kind of pull you in. Yeah, it's just like the one thing where even even if it's tedious, like editing work, you know, mm -hmm. I get it done and, and, and I just make sure that I'm always, you know, carving out time, not just for like the, you know, like professional side of, you know, doing freelance stuff for clients and all that, but like finding time to still like inspire myself. Yeah. Um, well, that's a really tricky balance. And that's something I've leaned into recently because you do got to pay the bills. You got to, And I'm a longtime entrepreneur because I played lacrosse in college. And the second I graduated, I'm like, I never want a boss again. Like I didn't care yeah. if I was sleeping under a bridge. We're going to do a company. I don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. we're going to figure it out. But navigating that was really hard. And you are your own boss. You got to hold yourself accountable. And doing marketing PR, I did everything for everybody else. And I'm finally to a point where it's like, okay, you got to cut it down, do this for yourself. You know mm. how to do it. It's weird doing it for yourself because totally. it's like your own client, but you have to have that balance of keeping it passionate and keeping the passion not too businessy so you don't not want to do it. Right, right. It's really tricky. Yeah. Do you no. have like tools that you, like is there like a cutoff amount of time or how I do you mean, balance that? I mean, it depends, you know, if it's work, work, if I'm, if, if it's for a client, I'm just getting it done. Yeah. Because you know, those are just deadlines that are set. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like writing my own music, if I, if I'm running into a writer's block, there's a couple things I'll do. Um, one thing is I'll just like take a couple days off and this is going to sound goofy, but like Legos or like a puzzle, yeah. something that like, you know, you have instructions, you put it together and then it's finished like just giving your brain a break like that. Yep. Um, 
another thing is just watching, you know, videos of, of, you know, old recordings and producers and things like that. Like there's, there's one that I watch all the time if I like need a little inspiration and it's of Jay-Z. It's a documentary of him writing the black album. And I watch that all the time, just stuff like that, yeah. that, you know, yeah. kind of fires me up. Um, I and love then, that not to interrupt you because I'm a huge documentary person. Yeah, no. So anytime like, I get off, I'll I'll go watch like Harriet Tubman or I someone which there's a lot of people that have a harder journey than mine. Right. So I'm like, stop it, get yeah. it together. And another one I watch all the time. It's probably one of my favorite movies ever. Um, it's called Sound City. Okay. And it's about the studio Sound City. It was a legendary studio Is in this LA. Netflix. Uh, it's I on, I believe it. it's available to rent on Amazon. It's okay. like three bucks. It's worth every penny of it, in my opinion. Um, but it's about Sound City, which was a legendary studio in California. Um, that was kind of a dump at first, but like every, like Fleetwood Mac formed yeah. there and recorded their first album there. Some of those were, it's like really nostalgic, like CBGB where it's disgusting, yeah, but like Ramones yeah. and like history and yeah. like, th those and are the And so best there was tons of recording there and then it, it closed down, I think in the early 2000s. And um, the console that they had built for them was a legendary legendary neve console that was built just for them it's like a one of one and it's okay. one of the nicest consoles where ever. is it now do you know so that's part of the movie um oh. they were gonna give it to the rock and roll hall of fame um but they ended up selling it to dave Grohl from the foo fighters do you know how much it was i had a lot i'm yeah. sure yeah but he uh ended up building and this is all part of the movie he ended up building his own um all analog studio what? So they record to tape through the Neve and then it, it, it eventually ends up digital. Okay. Um, because that's just how things work now, but it all is recorded onto tape through the console. And part of the movie is him, um, you know, collaborating with all these artists that had previously recorded there. Like he does a song with Stevie Nicks. He does oh a song gosh. with Paul McCartney. He does one with like nine inch nails and Queens of the stone age, like every, most of the bands there. And it Could was you imagine the energy in that room. Oh my God. Like, I mean, yeah. And it was the engineer on, it was Butch Vig who did Nirvana, like never mind mm -hmm. all. Yeah. So that one is a go-to for me because at the end of that, I'm like, Whoa, yeah. like that was crazy. I need to be on that level. Yeah. So just things like that, like things that fire me up and things that like, take my brain to like a different place you know i think that's necessary Just like going everything. on a run even, yes you know like, yeah mix it up yeah and i think you can't really say enough about taking space like whether it's training or your business or creating sometimes you just have to take a break mm -hmm. completely disconnect and foster some of those other brainwave firing channels yeah. and just completely get yeah away. because it's really easy to like get burnt out yes. too because like all you know get a song started and 75 percent finished that like i'm really into and i'm super stoked on but if i listen to it too much in a short like certain period of time and work on it too much then by the end of that i'm like okay well i don't even want to work on this and yeah. i like never end up opening it again yeah. so yeah also just being cognizant of like okay if i'm in a block and i'm just getting frustrated let's just call it a day and, and move it. on and do something else yeah. um because then you got the business side too you got to worry right like it's well all yeah and that's well and that's when you know and, th and that's i was saying you know i'm writing a lot right now i'm kind of getting a catalog going so i'm able to take a little break from the production side of things and engineering side of things and you know drop some business plans and work on that sort of aspect um because if i'm doing both at the same time that like totally takes away from you know it's, it's using two completely different it. sides of my brain mm -hmm. um and so yeah but yeah i yeah, i like to call it my administrative things That's good. well and when you don't have a boss like when you're your own boss you literally have to figure out yeah. what works for you and i started my morning routine which i am not a structured human i'm truly a creative at heart and mm -hmm. i know what i want i know how to like I like to design it, but I do it at my time frame. I'm way more of a night totally, owl, yeah. but I, I get up early now, early for me. And I do like my meditation and my affirmations. And it's, I'm on like day 112, but it took me till I was 40 years old to be yeah. like, okay, we can add a little structure. You're yeah. not going to like break out into a rash. So I, I've been doing that and it's been such good balance for, to control, or the, I shouldn't say control, to uh, foster the creative side mm -hmm. in a total different angle. Yeah, I, uh, and I just started pretty recently. It's been probably like six weeks. Okay. Um, well, you're ahead of the game according to my well, timeline. Well, yeah, but I, <laughs> I started meditating. Um, okay. And that has been really helpful at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day. And not like the guided meditations where it's like, breathe in. Hey, don't hate those. I do some oh, of those. Oh, no, I'm, 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 they, they don't work for me. Yeah, you got to find your vibe. Me. And so, I mean, the way I meditate is I'll just sit in silence and... 
when those thoughts come to me, I just kind of like let them glide over. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a good way to like start. So at the end of the day, I'm mainly kind of like, all right, what's still on my mind? That's like bugging me. Let's just chill out. Yeah. Alleviate all that. And in the morning, it's more kind of what you were just talking about, like affirmations, you know? Um, I wish I would have done it so I'm much gonna have it Today is going to be a good day, like regardless of what's happening. Because I mean, I, I, I get anxious at times, you know, and like I'll wake up like, oh, like stomach Well, you got a lot on your plate yeah, too. Yeah, if I've got something big going on, like today I was a little hey. nervous. First podcast. Were you? Yeah. Totally. Oh, okay. But um, this is, I don't want to put too much nerves on you, but I was like, as I was driving here, I'm like, this is so cool. This is like Timbaland and Missy Elliott. <laughs> You're Timbaland, I'm Missy Elliott. All I need is like a billion dollars in a green Lamborghini yeah. over there. Me and you both. <laughs> yes. Me and you both. I can't rap or compose, so maybe I have to lean into that at some angle. Um, but yeah, though this was today was a good day. I'm, this is so great. It's just such good energy and vibes, and to connect with fellow creatives, and yeah, it, it's amazing. I, I do want to talk about. Um, how I think it's beneficial for people to hear how you do like cross promotion. When I initially came to Elliot, I'm like, dude, I'm new to podcasting. I'm about two years in now, but I know nothing about audio. I would have used you head to toe in the beginning if I could have learned right. anything. It was so just like figure it out. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, I think you got to get into some of the podcasting world, do like monetize some of that. So mm. I introduced Elliot to uh, PodFest and some of the pod community because they're amazing. They're like the CrossFit community. Everybody's super supportive. But I think in this day and age, it's really important as entrepreneurs and as creatives and people that are both uh, that you do some creative strategy and you yeah. lean into other markets you might totally not have even thought of. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean... Uh, a huge thing and i'm i'm giving a seminar at podfest next week um yeah. the date's tbd but hopefully by the time this is uploaded we can have it in the bio or something like that we'll put all the details but um yeah a, a lot of you know jumping into the space that you're in has been has been interesting and super cool because it's a lot of it's it's a lot it seems at least on the surface to be a lot more like of consulting yeah. Because just like I was saying, you know, the business side of things really hamper my creativity. I think, and I'm speaking for you guys, but like setting up a podcast and stuff like that and like not having a background in audio or anything like that and trying to figure that oh. out is like super draining. <laughs> well, um, you just, you're not good. It's yeah. like going to compete in a CrossFit competition and you do yoga. Like right. you're totally out of your element. And so I think like, I think especially now that like the, the pan, we're, I, I think we see the light at the end of the tunnel and, we're going to be moving away from like zoom podcasts and yeah. doing more in person like this. Um, I think it's both important and like pretty, pretty easy to set up, you know, I mean, this is kind of complex, but we kind of got one a little extra. This is a privilege. Like this day. kind of stuff. You can do this on the regular. I mean, if I get to when I get to Joe Rogan level, yes. well, but exactly. till then this is pretty damn awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so, but I, I think it's important, you know, for people at least to be thinking about getting a setup put together that works for them, that isn't like stupid expensive because it, it I mean, it's really easy for buying gear. Like there's a reason I love that microphone so much, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, just, just getting a, a setup put together that is streamlined that you don't have to like think twice about you yeah. know how it works you can sit down you're ready to go and you just press record and and then you're done well even that was pretty hard and this is why i was like elliot do a master class put it out there and podcasters if you're out there anybody that's an audio that needs help reach out to these professionals yeah, because it it's worth whatever you spend because i i promise you as you learn it you do start to learn it a little but again it's like you're trying to enter into a professional level and you're right. two years in like you need a pro yeah and and all it and really all it takes is um either a USB microphone, which you won't even need an interface, which is what we're using here. But all you really need is an interface, a mic microphone or microphones, um, a laptop and some software, which yeah. you can literally use GarageBand or whatever you have. Mine's, I think um, I still use Audacity. It's yeah. all Zoom now. And I think I told you, I ironically built out a studio and mm. I use the term studio very casually, uh, yeah. but in the side of my garage. And it's actually, we have sound panels. It's not bad. Yeah, it's treated. But then pandemic happened and so everything was back to Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, and it's cool that you can record. But you can even, I mean, if you're on Zoom, you can, you can make your audio settings so that if you're using an interface or you were talking about like your focus, right? Yeah. You can, make it so that the audio is coming in from there okay so but things well, like things like this you. where like if you yeah. need help with stuff yeah. like this like that's what we're here for yeah um and it's a lot more easy than 
like you draw it up to be. Yeah. Um, and it just takes like a couple little things. So yeah, I mean, definitely reach out to me. <laughs> Hit up. Man, I, I wanted to do some but... like, videos on um, like YouTube stuff. Like I really think it would be amazing. And again, that cross promo of like right. maybe artists like uh, musicians have a podcast or podcasters are musicians or you don't know where that crossover is because nowadays everybody does everything right, right. and you don't know when you're going to pick up a friend or a client or whatever where you're going to vibe on you know we're talking about audio but now we're talking about fitness or, mm -hmm. like that crossover is just so critical right. um but also streamlining process on the flip side of that as complicated as it sounds i would encourage everybody out there i always say everybody should have a podcast because it's so nurturing to your soul if it speaks to you but just start even if it's yeah. really crappy just start and then yeah. get the pros along the way yeah and the same thing goes with like if you're making music and stuff like yeah. that you know i mean is, it's a privilege to be working in a studio like this. Um, but like I said earlier, people didn't stop creating during the pandemic yeah. and you can, you can learn and make good stuff in your bedroom. You know? Well, even I mean, if it's not to sell a million records or yeah. be the biggest star, it's just nurturing for your yeah, soul. Like absolutely. when you talk about missing it, like you're doing the party, doing whatever, and there was some pull back to music that you needed. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Creative's the vibe. Yep. Well, so tell us about what's coming up. What's big on the Denver scene? Um, I'll, I'll put the PodFest situation in there. But outside of that, what yeah. else do you have going on? Um, so I I only have one booking currently for live shows. Um, it's going to be... Even uh, that's good, though. We're, yeah. oh, I'm, we're open. Trust me. I am <laughs> yeah. stoked. Um, it's going to be for a festival called the Kaya Project. It's a uh, up past Breckenridge. I can't remember the exact town. It's uh, July 9th through the 11th. And uh, tickets are available on their website. It's just kayaproject.com. It's a summer event number one, but yeah, so it's a, uh, it's an art festival and, and music festival. Cool. So I'm going to be playing an analog set with, uh, with my, actually my roommate, but my buddy Kyle, who goes by Emerald Wells, super talented musician. So we're going to be playing a live set and then we're going to be playing a DJ set later that night. So I'm super stoked for that. What kind of music? Um, uh, mainly, I, so the, the analog set is kind of like sort of down tempo, like house stuff um and a little bit of everything it's just it's it's almost improvised like we have a kind of set we have set keys and things like that but it's it's kind of improvisation okay um and that one's going to be like in the art tent so that'll be cool and then the late night set's just going to be straight boots and cats house music <laughs> okay and techno. boots and cats boots and cats okay. and boots and cats. i'm not super privy to like the house music <laughs> situation but no doubt boots but, and um, cats. and then yeah so that's the only one i have currently booked like a hundred percent um, I'm working and talking with a promoter at Beta right now. Oh yeah, downtown that got um, ranked like one of the best clubs in the yeah, world by just, Rolling Stone. They just yeah they they just revamped it. I'm pretty sure and, and it's Lots reopening of money. now. Um, and so I'm working on getting a headlining set there. So details for that will be coming soon on we'll, my we'll on my that. Instagram, which is uh, at Parmajown. So it's P A R M A J A. W -W, -W, w w w n on instagram <laughs> that's like so a full website you might have to go back 15 seconds to get that whole thing but we'll tag it all i tease you but tell us a little i'm obviously a branding professional and i love this tell us about parmesan where did that come from am so, i even saying it right it was a stupid like little meme that was from like six years ago and i just like on a whim changed my instagram handle to it and I was going by like ruckus, R U K U S, all of high school and like into college and stuff like that. And I was trying to figure out a name change, and all the other ones I was thinking of were just like super stupid. I think one of the ones that my roommate still makes fun of me for it was Lestache, like the mustache, <laughs> yes. Lestache, because I had a mustache and it was disgusting. But then my my ex girlfriend at one point was just like, "Why don't you just go as Parmesan?" And I was like, "Okay." So yeah. I kind of went with it a little bit, and then like. Once I started playing shows and stuff like that, and like people would come just like they would be like Parma Jones. Yeah, yeah. So, See, even though it's like totally stupid, like it's, it's not kinda, stupid though. No, it's, it's just perfectly it, branded. Yeah, and it's well, it's on brand for like me, you know. Like, yeah. I mean, I I love music and I take what I do very seriously, but also at the same time, like I don't take anything seriously. Turmeric and tequila. Like, yeah, exactly. Hundred like, percent. I. I try to be like easygoing and and just kind of go with the flow and don't let things you know bother me and and so yeah I mean I think it kind of ties into like who I am as a person and it's just goofy and people like it. I so. like it. I like when you said sound Gouda. I'm like this yeah, dude. I say that a lot. Sounds Gouda. <laughs> I don't say sounds good. These are like dad jokes in the making, so <laughs> yeah. it's perfect. 
It's yeah. Well, you know my dad. He's got plenty of those. Dude, I love your. No, I love his dad. Literally, I'm so thankful he's there most days because we'll be like laughing about tequila when everyone's like, "What's a warm up? What's this?" And it's like so intense. I'm like, dude, we're not going to the games. Like, let's just relax yeah. here for a second and just we're gonna get the workout in. Breathe. Um, but no, I just I'm so fascinated by human behavior and even as a, an intentional branding professional, I love when it happens organically because yeah. that's the authentic through line. It, like, yeah, it's totally. really a cool thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's it's pretty like easy when it comes to like logo design and stuff like that too. Like I've got one, I've got a buddy that's making one for me now. I have I don't know how I haven't gotten one at this point, but I just I'm I'm finally g- getting a copyright for it. Oh, so good. Okay. I will own Parmesan. Yes. Well, if you need trademark it. lawyers or anything, I'm navigating that whole thing. Right on. It's a situation. Am, yeah, Reach out to me. That's a it's, whole new world that I'm venturing yeah, into. Yeah, it's a beast. So. But it's necessary. It's a, oh, it could yeah. be a lot of money. Oh, but totally. My business advice would be like, get yeah, it now. Yeah, no, down the road, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love this. We can go on, but I want to know what is, I mean, as you're a budding entrepreneur, a budding artist, even though you're, you are in the mix, yeah. um, what is like one good piece of advice for a creative out there, whether it's a painter, a musician, whatever, a branding professional that's leaning in for them to take that first step and just kind of follow the dream? Um, yeah. I mean, I think like partially like what you said before, like just do it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one thing. Um, and another thing too, is like they're, I mean, I know it's daunting and to kind of start and especially in the world that I work in, like there's like the young engineers that think they know everything, the old guy, and it, it's just the music industry. But yeah. like you said, if you're just getting into it to create and, and it's something you want to do, then I mean, just start because part of that too, is that like, there is so much out there for free that can te- that can teach you, you know, like yeah. you can learn, like I, before I went to school, for you know audio engineering and that's where i learned pro tools which is you know like the industry standard and is what i record with uh i still compose my music in ableton and i learned most i mean i took a class at the school that i went to and that was awesome and i learned a ton uh from my instructor aaron holstein he goes by vibe squad that's my guy great dude um but uh yeah there's 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 so many tutorials out there like i taught myself ableton before you know and i mean i had some musical background yeah i mean but but most of it was you know playing guitar and singing at shows and so it's it's definitely daunting when you like open the software for the first time and you're like oh jesus audacity i was like okay yeah but like there's there's so much out there for free and like paid content too that that can really get you going um and yeah i mean i think i think you put it best like if it's something that that is fulfilling for you and that you like to do and that you think would, you know, have a positive impact on your life, regardless if you want to take it to the level that I eventually would like to take it to, or if you want to just, you know, make some beats in your bedroom. Um, I think the most important thing is to just do it and like, do what makes you happy. And that's such a, like, that's such like a cliche, So but it's like all the cliches are cliches for a reason. And it's because they're, they're true. And so, I mean, yeah, and it's even something I struggle with, like, you know, I'll wake up and like, I'll listen to, you know, a tune that like, I'm like, holy shit, how did they make that? And I'm like, how am I ever even going to get to that yeah. level? Comparison's thief of joy, though. You got right. And I do the same thing. You got to Yeah. And so it, it, it feeds his motivation a little bit, too. And there so, yeah, I think I think just do it, you know, and and look for, you know, the free stuff, but also like if there's people in your circle that do it, like feel free to like ask them, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, just, just be curious, I yeah. guess. Um, and if you're trying to like do something professionally and like, you really want to get the ball rolling, like you just need to work. Yeah. Like, and, and I think the most important, important aspect of that is just like self accountability because that's something I struggle with all the time. It doesn't like, seem like it. You're a I man mean, wise yeah. beyond your years. Man. I know. I know. It doesn't <laughs> seem like it, but like, yeah, you know, it's like all, I'll start writing a tune and I'm like, all right, hate it. Starting out, and that gets me in a thought loop and it's, it, so it's tough, but yeah. like I said earlier, like I hold myself to a pretty high standard. And so it's a blessing and a curse, I guess. But yeah, yeah. I, I think, you know, if you're curious and you want to do something, just do it no matter what it is, no matter if it's podcasting music, if you're like a gamer, like whatever, you know, just yeah. do it. Um, and if you want to, you know, take that and roll, then 
just just work hard and and stay true to yourself too like yeah. i there's no like you know smoke and mirrors with me like this is who i am and this is what i do and like that's what i try to put out there um and so yeah just like just yeah just keeping yourself grounded in that sense too i think is is pretty important but i love it yeah. all wise words man this is this, these are these are major nuggets especially if you're under 30 uh, get a pen and paper. And even if you're over 30, get a pen and paper because I'm still here learning these things. Um, but I, I, all all amazing things. And I can't wait to see where this creative journey yeah. leads you. Yeah. Uh, where do we find you? I know you dropped your IG handle, but give us anything else. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too. Um, Parma John, um, Clubhouse. It's the same, same username on all, all platforms. Um, and if you'd like to get a hold of me for for like some consulting or anything like that or editing any anything that you need help with, um, you can just feel free to email me. It's just eb anderson nineteen ninety eight at gmail. Oh, wow. um, so that's definitely the best way to get a hold of me for you know inquiries and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean my my Instagram is like primarily you know where I yeah. where I put all my content just because it's so accessible and it's so easy. Um, but yeah. So, and thank you so much for having me. This has been super yeah. fun. This and, is um, huge. It, I mean, this yeah. is soul fuel for me again, to be around the crew, yeah, be in totally. the mix. So yeah. mutually beneficial. Sweet. Well, well I, I appreciate you. I can't wait to see what's next. Quincy Jones, Rick Rubin, look out. Yes, sir. Uh, Elliot Anderson, Parmesan. Or hit me up. I'd love to work with or, you. Yeah. Uh, hit, you, Missy and Tim, you heard it here <laughs> I will first. take your trash out, Rick Rubin. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> I'll probably save the trash. I don't know if that's creepy, but it's it's factual. Um, but I appreciate the time and energy. Let's like reconnect in like six months to a year and totally. just see yeah. what's going on. And Denver Creatives, uh, local, near and far, I want to be highlighting. I want to be having these conversations. I think it's so important for what's coming out and people following their heart, yeah. all the cliches today, yeah. and highlighting that. So holler at me. Elliot did it first on Tumic and Tequila. So thank you yes, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Right on. Thanks, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time. And don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Yeah.